Now, She Leads Africa is a foundation started by two Nigerian women that aims to support female African entrepreneurs both on the continent and in the diaspora. Founders Yasmin Bello Osage and Afwa Ose have been traveling around the world holding events that they call She Hives, the latest of which took place in London this past week. So thank you so much for joining me, ladies. I'm going to start with the most obvious question, which is, of course, how was She Leads Africa born? Yeah. Well, um, Yasmin and I actually used to work together as business consultants. And I think independently through our interest in entrepreneurship and startups and investing, we just kept seeing that there weren't enough women on stage. Or when you read an article about the top 10 you know, young business people, very rarely did you see a young woman on the list. And we said, well, there has to be some women out there who are like us, who are building incredible businesses. So we decided to start with the pitch competition. We said, let's test out this concept to see if there are any women-led businesses on the continent or the diaspora who might be interested, and let's see how it happens. And within six weeks, we had more than 400 applications from 20-something countries, so we knew that there was something there that we wanted to pursue. Now, you've both been traveling around different parts of the world holding she hives. Yes. Can you explain what exactly that is? No, of course. So... Um, I think kind of, as Afwa said, our real mission is thinking about sort of how do we um, support or empower sort of young African women on their professional and their entrepreneurial journeys. Um, and, you know, started off with the pitch competition and then sort of doing a lot of work in the digital space. So thinking about, well, how do we create content online for our community? Um, but I think that one of the things that we found, one of the things that we always wanted to do was think about how we can do in-person events. Um, because even though I think a key component of the work that we do is about kind of giving people information, um, there's also something about helping them build a network of other kind of young, like-minded women who they can support and who can, they can partner with. And so we came up with the concept of the She Hive, which is sort of a four-day um, learning and networking boot camp. Um, the whole idea is, you know, one, teaching people really tangible business skills. So not kind of the standard conferences where you go and people just talk high level, but really saying, learn about marketing, about PR, about, you know, business development, about building your LinkedIn profile. Um, I think the second thing we really wanted to do was helping people sort of create a network. And so we wanted to, in cities around the world, be able to bring young, amazing African women together um, in a space where, you know, we're not talking about fashion or entertainment or makeup and those are really important topics of course um, but I think we wanted to do something whereby you were bringing people together to kind of come and talk about their goals and their um, professional ambition um, and so we came up with the she hive and it's we're now city five so we've done five cities this year so Accra, um, Abuja, New York, Nairobi and now London I'm very excited to go to Lagos uh, and then Johannesburg. Now, one thing I think everyone looking at both of you would think is they're so young. What made you think that you were up to the task and up to the challenge? Because it is a really big challenge. So mm. where would you get that gusto from? Mm -hmm. That's weird. I don't think we ever thought that this isn't something that we could do. I think there are a lot of organizations out there that are focused on different demographic groups, but we never saw one that was focused on young women like ourselves. So we actually think we're best suited to be able to create content and create programs and experiences that actually matches and serves the needs of young women like ourselves. So from the language that we use on Instagram to the type of images we use, it really resonates with our audience because we're creating for people like ourselves. Now, I think, oh, um, just to add on to what Afo was saying, so, I mean, one of the things that we're always doing is pushing young women to think big. So I remember there was one time where we were talking to one entrepreneur and she had said to us, so she's based in Nairobi, and she was, you know, selling filters or something like that, and she would said, well, in three years, she really wants to move out of Nairobi. And we were like, well, in like two years, you should be across Kenya, and like three years, you should actually be thinking about growing across East Africa. So I think a lot of the work we do is actually forcing young women to like think big and think that, you know, you can take over the world. Um, so it'd be kind of sad if like we didn't, I think, set ambitious and lofty goals for ourselves as an organization. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Now, just bringing it back to the She Hives and the event that you just hosted in London. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I know our team were there and we had some interviews with your, your attendees. Mm -hmm. But what was the experience like? What was the reception like? Yeah. So I think that um, the reception was really positive. So um, kind of the way we structured the Shehaizer, the first two days are sort of long workshops led by myself and my co-founder, 
We typically have very small groups, so it's maximum sort of, you know, eight to 15 participants um, to really give people an opportunity to have that kind of individualized learning. Um, and it's kind of very workshop type setting in that you will go away, you will work on your business whilst you're there. Um, then over the weekend, um, we had a great lineup of um, speakers. So had people like, um, you know, Zeze, who is the founder of a company called Malay that makes sort of luxury cosmetics. Um, we had someone called uh, Jessica Hope, who's the founder of Wimbard. She's sort of the PR guru behind Jason and Joku, who so many people know so well. Um, also had um, someone, uh, a gentleman from Algeria, political analyst, um, who were speaking about how you sort of build your public profile. And then sort of sprinkled in between all the seriousness, you know, we had speed networking games, you know, people had to do a rap battle, people had to come up with, you know, an advert for why they think the she highs are really exciting. Um, so I think that we tried to create an atmosphere that was, um, yes, about learning and networking, but also kind of very fun um, and useful. Um, and I think it was great for us to have Facebook um, as our partners because I think even the space that they have um, in London is sort of very young, very fresh. Um, and I think it really suited the atmosphere that we were trying to create. I agree. No, I, we were so excited. This is our first time in London. And you never know when you're hosting an event in a city uh, whether or not people are going to come out. But the response was incredible. Um, you could tell that there's really a desire for young women in the city to make connections. We actually had people come from Paris as well to participate. So you could tell that there are young women in Europe who are looking for these opportunities. And we look forward to growing and expanding and coming back very soon. I think that working with these incredible entrepreneurs and the young women in our community has just kind of taught me so much about the innovation and the opportunities that exist on the continent. I mean, every day we're learning about someone who's solving some new problem or developing some new device or, or business, and it's incredible and it's exciting. And so if you're having a bad day and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't do it, you're reminded that there are so many other young women that are doing it as well. So it's motivational. I think I really have been inspired and encouraged by the work that we're doing and the women that we work with. And finally, just to wrap up, I mean, for anyone who didn't attend the event or isn't so familiar with what you guys do, but has heard everything that we're talking about and says, oh, you know, that sounds like me. I think I want to step out and try something. Mm -hmm. What would your advice be, each of you, to an up and coming or a potential female entrepreneur? First and foremost, I'd encourage them to go to shebeesafrica.org. I think uh, so many people are looking for one-on-one -on -one mentorship, and it can be hard to find someone who's going to be committed to you. So I think in today's day and age, you have to be proactive about finding opportunities. You have to be proactive about looking for knowledge, looking for networks, and learning and staying, um, staying updated on what's going on. So, of course, it should be at our website, but also following influencers on Twitter. But don't wait for things to come to you. Um, take advantage of resources that exist. And if they don't exist, go and create your own. Yeah, I mean, I think that what I would say would be very similar to what Afwa said. So I think um, people or sort of entrepreneurs really, apart from the, oh, just start, which I think is, you know, the obvious one. Um, but I think you really have to be intentional about um, cultivating the skills that you need as an entrepreneur. So A, being very aware of, okay, what is it that I need to learn, whether it's, you know, marketing, whether it's learning how to grow an online community, but kind of once you know what it is, actually be very intentional about trying to develop those skills and really immerse yourself in trying to develop as a young professional or as a, as a, as a young entrepreneur. So thank you so much for joining us, ladies. Thank, thank you for having, having us. us.